Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. If you're new, I'm Amanda. Welcome to the channel where we are all about shattering the mental health stigma. If you haven't already, make sure you make sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button so you're not missing any of these reactions, any of my vlogs about my mental health journey, or any of my celebrity interviews about their mental health journeys. Today's reaction is a request from Leo, my amazing, super awesome Patreon. Thank you so much for your continued love and support. Guys, if you haven't had a chance to check out my Patreon, make sure to do so. Link is in the description. You get priority song requests. You get to jump on multiple live streams with me every month just to chat and hang out. You get personalized pictures, behind the scenes pictures and video, and so, so, so much more. Every single dime goes toward my mental health outreach. So make sure to check that out. Like I said, link is in the description. But today we are reacting to, I am reacting to, you are reacting to me reacting to, <laughs> cut by Plum. Don't have any idea what I'm getting into, don't have any idea uh, what genre music this is or anything, but I always love jumping in and just figuring it out as I go, right? So here we go. Cut by Plum. So just by the title, I am kind of getting the vibe, along with the message and the visuals here, that this girl is someone who self-harms, uh, which is something that a lot of people struggling with mental health um, confront because it's just a way of coping with all of these overwhelming thoughts and things um, inside of them that they can't get out. And I am... Uh, former self-harmer myself. I've been a little over three years in June uh, in recovery from self-harm, but I understand uh, what she's saying here. I'm not a stranger. No, I am yours. I know a lot of people have spoken out about how they try to talk to someone or someone finds out about their self-harming and they look at them like they're insane or that they're crazy or that they're broken or that they're less of a human because of this. And that line was really powerful saying, I'm not a stranger, I'm still yours, uh, whether that's uh, a parent or a lover or a friend or whatever. I'm still the same person, uh, just because I engage in this activity to cope doesn't make me any less valuable of a person. I just want to reiterate that it is not. Um, but th there is so much anger um, surrounding it. I, I remember how I used to get so upset and I'd self-harm from getting upset. And then I'd be angry at myself for, for engaging in that behavior. So it just perpetuated my self-harm more because I was angry at myself. Um, so it just perpetuated. I noticed that she's on her computer and a lot of people who do struggle a lot with their mental health, especially ones that self-harm tend to isolate a lot more because they're afraid of people finding out, they're afraid of being seen, they're afraid of being judged. So they engage a lot more online, which is why this community is here, so everyone has a safe place to engage online. Uh, but the most powerful of this part is just the, the when our eyes meet, I know you'll see. So when she can step away from that online world, when she can get someone to actually listen to her and look her in the eyes, then maybe they'll understand her struggles. I do not want to be
this is a really, really powerful song because there's not many songs that delve into the obscure and grim world of self-harm quite in this way and with such underlying beauty, such acceptance, and I like that. It's not demonizing it, it's helping you get into the mind of someone who struggles with this, which I think can be very powerful for loved ones uh, who know somebody um, and doesn't know how to approach them. Doing so with validation is always, is always, always, always best. And you don't want to be afraid. You're not wanting to be afraid of yourself. You're not wanting to be afraid of being found. And you certainly don't want to die just to survive. I know that sounds really silly, but I know anybody that's that's been in this state of mind gets that. First and foremost, you don't want to die. Uh, most people that are engaging in, in self-harm behavior aren't doing so because they are wanting to uh, end their life. They're wanting to end their pain. And in a lot of ways, um, it is a very short-term solution. It does help, um, but it crumbles you inside until you're dust. And that's where she was talking about anesthetic is in the act. Yeah, it helps in the short term, but it will destroy you and break you down uh, little by little. It'll, it'll kill you because you don't want to have to do it, but you need to either stop the pain you're feeling, the emotional pain you're feeling, or sometimes you just need to feel anything at all. I've been in the place where I was so emotionally overwhelmed that I became numb and I just wanted to feel something. And uh, <laughs> I remember someone who had found out about my self-harming told me that we only live once, you know, YOLO, you only live once. And I said, yeah, I only live once, but sometimes I have to do something to feel alive. And at the time, that was all I had. She's saying that the relief exists from this myriad of feelings that can be so many different things that trigger this, uh, but the relief exists when she engages in the behavior. She was tired of feeling numb, as she said. Uh, and I might, my gaze. Okay, we'll, we'll go back. I do not want. There's a couple more. Oh, I guess not. It said that there was a couple more seconds, but I love, 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 love that it ended on was. I, I that did not go unnoticed. The last uh, chorus when repeated said I was, I was cut. So she did overcome this and you can overcome 
uh, self-harm. Like I said, I'm over three years, almost three and a half years in recovery. So I am very excited uh, that, that there is another side to it. And I did share a video um, a few months ago that, that was tips on how to manage those, those cravings if you are feeling that. But the tears that still drip sore to me was referring to the actual uh, wound itself. The blood dripping from the wound looks a lot like tears. Um, and even when you can't cry anymore, even when there's nothing left and your tear ducts are just dried up, you're still bleeding either inside or outside. You're still crying either inside or outside. And I think that that's really painful. It's really rough. I like though that she felt hopeless in the beginning. And I noticed that she was talking about being painfully shy in the middle, which is a huge, huge breakthrough. I know that sounds crazy, but that wee bit of confidence is a huge breakthrough uh, for someone who struggles with something like this. So I feel like it's her journey. And then by the end, it's in past tense. So she's saying, I was cut, indicates that this is her journey, going to that place of hopelessness, um, getting through it, getting past it. So that that is really amazing. I was thinking as the song went on and she was repeating um, the part about I'm not a stranger, no, I'm yours. It might also be a possibility that she is giving herself up to a higher power because I know a lot of people uh, find comfort in that and they find healing in that in giving themselves up to a higher power and sacrificing themselves and surrendering to that. Um, I know that that's the first thing in AA and while I did not find that to be helpful, I know that the first thing in AA is surrendering yourself to a higher power and um, self-harm very much can be an addiction. So a lot of people might find solace in that. And for me, I am of the thought process that whatever brings you comfort, whatever makes you happy, whatever brings you healing, uh, so long as it's not hurting you or other people, I am all in support of that. So even though I'm not a believer, I very much support other people if that's where they uh, find the first step of their healing journey. I, I stand by my original assessment that it's it's a really, really poetic way to uh, get across this message of this is what's going through the person's mind and this is how they feel and this is the process that they're having. Uh, that It goes from the overwhelming emotion or the numbness and the desire to self-harm just becomes so overwhelming. I kind of describe it as, and I've said this before, that my dad, when I was little, I'd stub my toe and I'd be going, ah, freaking out over my toe hurting so bad. And my dad would come up and just playfully slug me in the arm and say, well, you're not going to think about your toe now. And it's a much more adult version of that. But when you're in such emotional agony and you would do anything for it to stop, having that distraction that is so intense that yeah, for that time being, you're not going to be able to think about your um, issues. But like I said, it's a very short term solution that over time it erodes you and eventually your spirit kind of turns to dust just from the cycle of pain, relief, guilt. Um, the dopamine hits, the dopamine drops, the, the chemicals are all over the place. The brain chemicals are all over the place and there's no stability. There's no structure there. There's no long term benefits of this vice, as I learned, um, it, it will not yield happiness in the long term, but I very, very, very much understand uh, what it's like to be in that state of mind where you're just so overwhelmed that you don't know what else to do. And I would never judge a person for being there, but I would always listen and uh, encourage in any way I could to find other vices. Like I said, I made that video um, just encouraging people to try and find healing through that because I know you don't want to. I know nobody wants to do this. Um, nobody wants to engage in self-harm behavior. It's just the only coping mechanism they had. As I knew well, I grew up in a small town where we didn't talk about mental health like a lot of the rest of the world. And it just became something that I turned to because I didn't have anyone to, to listen or to understand. I did have people that would listen, but I didn't have anyone that I felt would understand. And I was afraid that if I told my parents at the time, or a lot of my close friends that it would just be met with, well, you shouldn't do that, or you look crazy, or don't you know that that's not attractive, that's not beautiful? There are a lot of different 
variations of beauty, my friends. And if you do have scars, they don't make you any less valuable, any less beautiful, any less loved. Um, and I just want you to be able to, to know that. I, I, I want you to know that regardless of where you are, good, bad, and crazy, I am here to listen. Um, I read all of my comments, I read all of my messages, so if you ever need someone to talk to, if you're ever needing to just reach out to someone or just talk to someone who isn't going to judge you, I am always here. Um, if you feel comfortable, you can share your story in the comments. Good, bad, and crazy, it is a safe place here uh, just for people to talk about their mental health stories. That's how we shatter the stigma. That's how we move forward as a community. Um, if you haven't already, like I said, make sweet, sweet love to that subscribe button so you're not missing any of these videos. Share, you never know who needs to see it. This is, like I said, a great song and a great resource for someone who might know someone who's self-harming and not know quite how they're feeling. It might help them approach them better if they know how they're feeling. But I love you guys so, 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 so much. And again, Leo, thank you for the suggestion and furthering, further widening my musical horizons. Mwah.